animals, we sure seem to love them. Most of us can't stand to see them suffer. And we wouldn't sit idly by if we saw one getting abused. If we care about their welfare, we need to prioritise the actions that help the most animals by the greatest amount. Today we're going to go over these problems and recommend some of the best ways that you can help animals. Currently researchers tend to agree that we can best help by focusing our efforts on animals in factory farms and in the wild. Now, this might sound surprising, as you probably picture an animal shelter when thinking about charities that help animals, but even though most of the money donated to animal charities goes to pet shelters, the number of animals in factory farms is substantially higher, and the number of wild animals is enormous. First, let's talk about farmed animals. Images of the immense suffering on factory farms can be incredibly upsetting to see, so I'll quickly describe some of the facts. More than 70 billion land animals are killed for food every year worldwide. And over 90% of them spend their lives inside windowless sheds where they face severe confinement and frequent health issues and emotional distress. Egg-laying hens are crammed in groups of five in cages smaller than a sheet of paper. Pigs live in stalls so small they can't turn around. And chickens raised for meat have been genetically engineered to grow so heavy that one in three can't even stand up. Over a hundred billion farmed fish swim inside crowded pools, often full of disease, feces, and flesh-eating lice. Animal agriculture, it hurts humans too. It produces about 15% of global greenhouse gas emissions and has been traced to several pandemics in the past. And it's contributing to antibiotic-resistant infections that are expected to kill millions of people in the coming decades. One survey finds that about half of Americans agree that factory farming should be banned, Yet, people today consume more meat than ever. Organisations that help farmed animals only receive about $1 for every $4,500 donated in the US. And pet shelters receive over 80 times more than farmed animal charities, even though there are over 10,000 times as many animals in farms than there are pets in shelters. So factory farming is a huge and neglected issue. But what can you do to help? Well, to start with, a pretty obvious thing is to reduce your own consumption of animal products. By one estimate, going vegetarian for a year would spare about 105 animals, or about one-tenth of a cow, one-third of a pig, 12 birds, and 93 fish. <laughs> that means... <laughs> that means that you could save an animal every few days just by changing what you eat. If you're not ready to commit to going completely plant-based though, you can still get rid of most of the suffering in your diet just by eliminating a few products. If I had to pick only three, I'd stop eating fish, chicken, and eggs. That's because fish and chicken seem to endure the worst conditions of all, and small animals produce far fewer calories than larger ones. If you're trying to cut specific products though, be careful that you don't simply replace one with another. For example, if cutting beef causes you to eat more chicken, you could be doing more harm than good, since it takes a lot more chickens to make meat as it does a cow. So changing your diet is great, but you can do many times more good by supporting organisations that work to change the underlying systems of factory farming. Some advocates have secured huge wins for animals by lobbying governments to permanently ban cruel farming practices. In 2018, the Humane Society helped California pass Proposition 12, which legally required farms to provide enough space for animals to be able to turn around and stretch their limbs. Other strategies focus on securing commitments from companies to improve their welfare standards. For example, the Fish Welfare Initiative collaborates with governments and farmers to improve conditions for farmed fish. Organisations like the Humane League have run campaigns that have influenced hundreds of major companies like McDonald's, Walmart and Costco to stop selling eggs from caged hens. These changes likely affected hundreds of millions of chickens for relatively small budgets, which is why researchers Rethink Priorities estimate that every dollar spent on these campaigns prevented one year of life in a cage for between 9 and 120 chickens. If we took these numbers seriously, then giving 10% of the average American's income to a charity like the Humane League would improve the welfare for about 45,000 to 600,000 chickens for a whole year. There's always uncertainty with these kinds of estimates, but even if the true cost effectiveness were a fraction of this, and even if you cared about chickens a fraction as much as humans, that's still a massive impact. Despite the incredible effectiveness of welfare reform campaigns, most of the world probably won't go plant-based until markets offer cheaper and tastier substitutes for animal products. 
Thankfully, alternative proteins have exploded in recent years. Some plant-based companies like Just Eggs or Beyond Meat have already replaced millions of meals with cruelty-free options, and more products are launched every year. Another technology called cultured meat or clean meat grows animal cells in vitro to produce real meat without the need to harm any living animals. While the field of cultured meat is expanding rapidly, a growing number of researchers think that it'll likely take decades before it becomes cost competitive with traditional meats due to significant technical and economic challenges. Now that may sound disheartening, but speeding up this innovation by even a year could help billions of animals and would reduce greenhouse gas emissions significantly. Individuals like you can make the biggest difference here by supporting organisations that fill gaps that business models leave behind. For example, non-profits like the Good Food Institute and New Harvest help entrepreneurs and scientists enter the industry and lobby governments to fund publicly available research. Even if we don't end factory farming soon, the opportunities to help animals look pretty bright. Still, animal suffering exists far beyond farms. If you think life in a factory farm is terrible, you might think that life for a wild animal is awesome. After all, animals are meant to be wild, and many of life's greatest beauties can be found in nature. But what's natural isn't always what's good for well-being. Every day is a struggle against hunger, disease and injury, and the threat of being eaten alive by predators. The vast majority of animals die before reaching adulthood. Many face constant attack from parasites. For example, screwworms often lay their eggs in the wounds of deer, feeding on their flesh and killing them over two agonizing weeks. It's hard to know what it's like to live these lives, but many experts believe that most vertebrates, such as mammals, birds, and fish, are at least conscious. After all, pain is useful for survival, and animals often act similarly to humans in response to it. For example, poking a fish in the gills lights up the brain regions associated with pain in humans. We understand far less about the experiences of invertebrates like insects, but we shouldn't need complete certainty that an animal suffers in order to be concerned, because there are just so many wild animals. By some estimates, there are 10 times as many mammals and birds as there are humans, 100,000 times as many fish, and 100 million times as many insects. Even if there's, say, a 10% chance that any of them suffer, that's still an enormous amount of suffering in expectation. Thankfully, you can help by giving to charities like Wild Animal Initiative. They're growing a research field about how to best help wild animals. Welfare interventions are different from conservation, which typically focuses on preserving an ecosystem for its own sake, rather than directly to improve animal well-being. Despite being founded just three years ago, Wild Animal Initiative has already identified potentially promising solutions. For example, we could stun wild-caught fish before slaughter. We could use pesticides to kill insects faster and less painfully or modify populations' genes to make them immune to diseases. This field is new and deals with extremely complex systems, though so we need to be careful before taking large-scale or irreversible actions, which is why more research seems like the highest priority right now. Despite the enormous size of these issues, wild animal charities raise less than $10 million per year. That's about the budget of a typical zoo. Supporting additional research could prevent the needless suffering for billions and billions of creatures. If you're curious about more ways to help, check out Animal Charity Evaluators. They take an evidence-based approach to identify which charities help animals the most per dollar. We've mentioned some of their recommended charities, such as the Humane League and Wild Animal Initiative. They also recommend Faunalytics, which publishes research on the most effective ways to help animals. You could also donate to a charitable fund run by experienced grant makers, such as the Animal Charity Evaluators Recommended Charity Fund or Effective Altruism Animal Welfare Fund. For a list of these and other effective charities, go to givingwhatwecan.org slash donate. The vast amount of animal suffering in the world can feel overwhelming, but I hope this video has shown that you can make a real difference. Changing your diet can spare dozens of animals each year, and even small donations to effective organisations can benefit thousands of animals and bring us closer to a world of far less suffering. Over time, society has gradually expanded our circle of moral concern, from the family and the tribe to the nation and beyond. We're still a long way from truly caring about the welfare of all sentient creatures, but I hope you're inspired to change that. If we open our hearts to the shared suffering of creatures that may seem very different from us, and if we turn our minds to the most effective solutions to alleviate that suffering, then I think we can make the world a much better place for all. Thanks for taking the time to learn about animal welfare today. To take action and to learn more about this and other causes, I recommend you head over to givingwhatwecan.org, where we provide research and advice to help people give more and give more effectively. 
Please leave a comment if you like this video or if you have any feedback. And until next time, keep on doing good.